Hello and welcome to the Money Marketing Podcast. I'm Kimberly Dondo and in today's episode we are back again and by we I mean me and Lois. Chief reporter. Chief reporter. You didn't give yourself a Chief executive, sorry. Okay. Well, it's going to happen every time. I thought you were going to come up with something more creative this time around. (sighs) Sorry, I didn't have time. (laughs) too That's busy with fine. my chief executive role. There's been a lot going on. So um, I guess first I thought we should probably discuss a bit more about the consumer duty since we are at, at the anniversary of the yeah. implementation deadline. Yeah. So now we've made it. Last year everyone was like, oh God, how are we going to implement it for those that hadn't? And for those that already had, they were like why weren't you already doing this? Why is this so shocking? Um, But what have your findings been um, in the lead up to, you know, the anniversary? I'm sure you're working on a lot covering it. Yeah. Um, So I I actually had a chat um, recently with a financial advisor who only launched his business less than a year ago. I think it was September last year. Mm -hmm. So he was saying, obviously, he's... So when he went directly authorised instead of appointed representative, so he's not under a network. Mm -hmm. And he was saying in the forms that he had to fill out when he was launching his advice business, they were asking questions about the consumer duty. So he's sort of already set his business up with consumer duty in mind. Mm -hmm. Whereas I suppose if you're a financial advisor who's owned your own business for For years already, exactly, then it's probably been more of a hassle. Mm -hmm. Again, I always generalise, obviously, because you have to. Um, it is a generalisation, but yeah. I think the majority of them probably are finding all the extra questions they have to answer to the FCA and all the extra forms they have to fill out. They're probably finding it a bit of a burden. Yeah. Especially if they don't have any compliance function within their business. Like if that. So this advisor I was talking to yesterday is called Benjamin Mitchell. He's the only advisor in his advice business. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the way he wanted it and as I say he's only been up and running for a few months but Mm -hmm. he was saying he can imagine like if you've been a one-man band advisor for advice firm for decades it's probably been quite a sort of burden for you. I couldn't imagine setting something up years ago and running a system one way. I mean we talked about this a little bit last time where it was like you know, if you came into journalism 20 years ago versus now having to incorporate, you know, all aspects of media, mm. where including social media into that, that might be a bit of a burden for you. Um, that's how the an- analogy that I thought of. But I think one, I think once you pick something up, it does become second nature and you start doing automatically. So maybe initially there's like growing pains, but potentially maybe not this year but maybe next year we'll have more positive outcomes potentially yeah i would have thought so because i've we've had a lot of press releases as you can imagine all about the consumer duty one year on and what's happened mm-hmm. um i think i saw a, a press release headline the other day saying most customers haven't noticed a difference since the consumer duty came in which is like is that good or i, I don't know maybe that is good <laughs> or- but is has the level always been so high that so customers are like no this is standard exactly i also i ha- i didn't actually read the press release in depth <laughs> i must admit but i imagine it's partly because it's not just i i said this last podcast when we were mm-hmm. having our conversation it's obviously not just advisors that this applies to mm-hmm. it's also retail banks for example and i know a lot of them had already improved their whole customer service process. Mm -hmm. Um, I certainly personally have noticed it, like with my own, I used to be with Nationwide, they massively improved their their app and everything, their whole process. They had a rebrand So then I think if you wouldn't, as a customer, you wouldn't necessarily notice a huge amount of difference. Yeah. It's probably just more about Nationwide, for example, evidencing, as I said last time, Mm -hmm. all about evidencing rather than, changing what you're actually doing yeah and also I think I was having a conversation with Dr. Louis Williams from Dynamic Dynamic Planner and we were talking about um, the implications of consumer duty when it comes to like vulnerable clients Mm. and then we're talking about like first of all what is a vulnerable client because I think a lot of people just think 
elderly people who might be at risk of scams, scams and, yeah. and all of that stuff. But he was also like pointing out that, you know, there's people with um, different disabilities that can also be placed under that. And when you come to, it's not just visible disabilities as well. It's like mental ones where like you, narcolepsy, narcolepsy, ADHD. Um, so we have we run the gambit over here um but um i think i was i was saying you know like as someone who has difficulty um paying attention for a long time or i and i always need to juggle different things i do like it that um a lot of financial services products now have like very short succinct things that I can consume hmm. um, I think that is very useful so in those terms I wonder if advisors are also thinking of that as well yes that is a point I was going to make yeah we're so in sync <laughs> we are <laughs> um, so another thing Benjamin said when I was talking to him recently was it's been a real opportunity for advisors to make their I suppose the way they communicate with clients a lot more interesting and engaging mm -hmm. um, through not just sending out, you know, really long newsletters, letters, newsletters, but also just really long letters all in regulatory language through yeah. the post. Like that is such an old school thing to do. And yeah. a lot of clients now, again, generalization, but a lot of <laughs> clients are much more environmentally aware, for example. So they yeah. might not want a massive stack of paper every time they switch an investment or whatever they want to do. Mm hmm. Um, but also it's just really boring. Like I was, I think I've used this example example before when I was switching pensions into mm -hmm. pension B. Mm -hmm. I, so I switched four pensions, three of them just did it all fine, like uh, PDF signature. I mean, it was a little bit slow, but much faster than the fourth one. Yeah. Virgin Money, which I have. This was three years ago, to be fair. I'm sure they've updated their processes since and I'm pretty sure they've tied up with... I'm not going to say who because I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But they asked me, they sent out a massive stack of paper, all in regulatory language. And I got back to them and said, I don't, I'm not going to read through all this. Like, can you just send me sort of a little bit about what I should be paying aware attention, of, aware yeah. of? Um, and they got back and said, no, we have to send that all out because that's what the FCA says, which is just not true because the other three pension providers didn't do that. Yeah. They said that in order to transfer I had to send them a copy of my driver's license or passport and mm -hmm. I was like well obviously I'm not going to send the actual driver's license mm -hmm. so I had to send a photocopy get it I had to take it to the post office and get it stamped so <laughs> the post office is like 20 minutes walk away and they said we need a utility bill or something that's been sent they to they really address. didn't want you to do this <laughs> I was like, is, is this actually what you have to do or is this just blocking me it sometimes it does end up feeling that way like you're try they're trying to make you just give up because every process that you talked about with someone like me i would put it off yeah it's not that i'm giving up it's just that i'm like i'll get to it and then it will get to a point where it just never gets done it did and i'm sure longer. they probably have a lot of customers who might have ended up that way yeah, and then but and then also if you if a advisor has say I don't know 100, 150 clients yeah. and they're having to do that sort of process for every single client, that's so obviously they're not going to be able to give up because their customer it's their job their clients <laughs> going to need it done, but it's just going to take so much. Yeah, hassle. it's time consuming. When they I can't have remember other how we even got to onto cover. that, but yeah, it's We're, well, it's all in, encompassing in the consumer duty. Yes, I guess. consumer duty. Um, how advisors interact with clients. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, as I said, it's more, it's an opportunity to make the way that you interact with clients more interesting. Like you can mm -hmm. do videos. I think Benjamin does videos, like just short sort of snippets of information. Yeah. Is there anything else that's coming up when it comes to consumer duty or are we just like on a steady path now? I think probably steady path mm -hmm. from now on. Okay. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. Um, but we do have a new government in place since um, we last talked. We pretty much predicted it. We were right. Um, I don't think it was really shocking for anyone though. No. Um, but um, what has the fallout, I guess, or 
I don't know what a positive way of saying fallout <laughs> is. Um, the positive but, fallout. Yeah, what is the positive fallout <laughs> of that? Um, I know that most people, when I talk to them, they said, you know, it doesn't really matter when, you know, there's a new government coming in place because most of the time, whatever their policies are, they won't um, take effect for a while. Mm. Um, but I did see that um, Rachel Reeves announced a pensions review. So yeah. she hasn't, well, from what I've seen, she hasn't said a huge amount about it. So mm -hmm. I suppose we're still just speculating about what might be in there. Mm -hmm. um, we wrote a cover feature before Labour got in. I kind of did write it. I mean, it was neutral because when we were writing it, we didn't know who was going to be in power mm -hmm. when it was published we were going to find out two days after it was published or something. Yeah. So it had to be written in a sort of just the next government kind of way. Mm -hmm. But I did kind of write it with the fact that Labour was probably going to be in power mm -hmm. in my head. Um, and I wrote a bit about the pensions review and what might be included in that, including looking at um, auto-enrolment, yeah. which came in in 2012, I think, Mm -hmm. um, and has widely been regarded as a success because obviously more people are now saving into a pension via their workplace. Yeah. However. Unless they opt out like that Reddit story I was telling you about. But yeah, as for a future weekend essay. <laughs> keep that, yeah, keep that under wraps. Um, but yeah, um, unless they opt out, like you say, mm -hmm. does that s prevent a lot of people from engaging with their pension? And are they just thinking oh well my workplace is just sorting that out I don't even need to think about it mm -hmm. when actually they're probably not saving enough into their pension to fund their retirement because I think the contribution is eight percent yeah minimum minimum it goes yeah. anyway I think it's just you go in at eight percent yeah and that's not enough for most people and who are on like an average I think salary. for the everyday person they think that's it. That's fine. Yeah. Um, because because why, I, why else would they? Accept it like <laughs> why that? would they? Unless um, you're a pensions expert or work within pensions or are in or or you're a financial services journalist, I guess. Um, you won't know these things, and I didn't know these things until I was 25 and working for you know, the first magazine I ever worked for, which was Pensions Insight. And from there, like, I would talk to the other journalists and she, one of them would tell me I'm maxing out my pension. And I was like, what's that? <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know if I could afford to do that. That's she, she was like, I, she was very determined um, because she wrote about pensions all day. She mm -hmm. was very pa passionate about it. And it made me look at my pension and be like, okay, what more can I be doing? Um, I am still a pessimist when it comes to stuff like that. But... Um, it's good to have a contingency. It's though. good to have a contingency plan. I always have a contingency plan, even when, you know, I'm going about my daily life. So why not have, of course, have one for my pension as well. Um, but sh I know for a fact that my friends who aren't, aware of any of this if I wasn't telling them they would have no idea yeah if I didn't tell my parents they wouldn't have any idea um see mine's the other way around well, because I've always been aware aware because my dad's always been like you must pay mm -hmm. it more than they just put you on mm -hmm. just every time you get a pay rise put it up yeah so I've always done that but then you're like oh but dad I want to go on holiday yeah <laughs> Just get into loads of debt instead. Mm -hmm. We'll come on to that later. <laughs> <laughs> Put a pin in that. I'm going to go on about it again. Yeah, but I think they, that Labour does have a lot stacked up against them, it seems. Um, well, it was there one, um, and I can't remember who said it, so I apologise. I'm not going to tell everyone that you said it. But uh -huh. I read, um, obviously, because everyone... So it was such a weird election because yeah. most people were not voting because they really wanted Labour to be in power. Yeah. I know some people were. Mm -hmm. Lots of people, um, either former Tories or just others, were wanting Labour in power because they weren't the Tories. Mm -hmm. It was basically like an election of let's get the Tories out and it doesn't yeah. really matter who comes yeah. in in their place. We just want someone else. And so that does put quite a lot of pressure on Labour now to make the changes quite quickly because otherwise... Yeah people are going to sort of lose this momentum of change and get sort of 
they're going to start criticizing labor for not making changes but i think a logical person has to understand that 12 12 years yeah of damage i think it's 12 yeah is a lot to undo in potentially four years but what percentage of the british public would you say is well, logical <laughs> <laughs> also remember a person can be intelligent but people are stupid yeah i know i know the, no the thing is i think also sometimes we have this um idea and i i feel like we're slowly breaking that down you know like outside of financial services the whole age of like um celebrity and looking up to these people who hold certain positions and thinking that because they are in those positions they have a certain level of intelligence or elegance or whatever like they they are above us and can make better decisions than us i think we're slowly breaking that down and starting to see that person's just like me Mm -hmm. they just went to a better school does not necessarily mean that they are any better than i am and if i make mistakes then they have the potential of making those mistakes as well yeah definitely doesn't it's, mean that i should have empathy for them but <laughs> it's I, weird because i know social media's um like often criticized for showing just the best parts of someone's life mm-hmm. or like the really filtered parts and making people feel like they have to live up to an ideal i do also think probably the amount of social media posts there are nowadays like the number of social media posts there are nowadays probably helps people to see the reality celebrities are just yeah people as well i think also because there's so much like exposing that's happening as well amongst public figures that Hmm. even things done in the dark come to light um and bringing it back to labor um so yesterday i don't know when this is going to come out but yesterday um the chancellor did talk about the 20 billion pound black hole of public finances which again was very scary but i like that they're being so transparent because i think maybe that's what was lacking before and i think that's what makes most people anxious and angry is the lack of transparency because again we always talk about communication being important Mm. even with advisors and their clients so but also it's just really scary to think about what the upcoming budget will be based on that and hasn't she sort of said they're going to leave taxes for like regular people alone yeah capital gains tax they are gonna tax the rich yeah so i think I think she suggested, well, people are saying potentially she'll look at capital gains tax and inheritance tax, which will apply to our audience, the financial advisors. Um, They'll have to look out for that because there's a lot of people probably think hoping to pass something on to their kids. And now they'll have to figure out ways to make it more beneficial for them. And we know the, is it budget now, not statement? I it's a budget and see which way, way it's budget it in October. Budget is going to be 30th of October. Which I said was spooky. And how many p- uh, press releases are we going to get releasing it to Halloween? <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm doing a pitch for budget day this year. We come Best in Halloween pun. Yeah, we come in dressed in Halloween costumes to make it festive. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's okay. do it. Let's run it by Tom and see what he says. No, I don't need to do that. Let's just do it. We should just do it. Yeah, (laughs) let's just do it. Um, (laughs) Moving on. um, I guess let's talk about emerging trends. So have there been any big trends or anything new that you've noticed when you've been out and about? Um, I... this whole thing about integration between different technologies Mm -hmm. like back office providers and platforms and other technology that advisors have to use to run their businesses it's not new but it's definitely gaining traction there seem to be quite a few little startup businesses that are sort of coming up and trying to help now Mm -hmm. um so i spoke to one again i don't know when this is going to come out but recently yeah this morning (laughs) This morning when we're recording. Yeah. Um, which I won't mention because I haven't written about them yet. Mm-hmm. But then there was also, I went to an event held by the Langcat called mm-hmm. the Catwalk. Mm-hmm. When was that? Must have been about a month ago. Yeah, May. Was it May? No. 
June. Sorry, early June. Sorry, yeah. June, yeah. Um, and so they were uh, showcasing five different tech providers, mm-hmm. and the winner was Zero Key, which is a business that started up to make integrations between um, platforms and different tech providers more seamless. Mm-hmm. And it's an interesting business because they don't need the provider's permission to do that. They can just do it. Obviously, they're going to go and talk to the providers first. Yeah. But they can actually just do it whether they've got a API or not. Mm-hmm. Um, because like, one of the issues is even if a big back office provider, say, says that they can integrate with different platforms, um, often that's only one way. So, yes, they can integrate with that platform, but the platform might not be able to integrate back whereas true integration is obviously Mm two-way and that's one of the things that this business zero key is trying to correct okay i suppose so that's one area integration gaining traction Mm -hmm. i don't think there have been any massive developments with ai since we last who knows I mean, I've looked into not necessarily within financial services, but I find it really interesting, the whole concept of the fact that right now, I don't know if you've come across it, but I've been I've seen so many messages. I don't know why they're targeting me, but they keep asking, um, do you want to train AI? And essentially, I find it so bizarre that they are recruiting human beings to train these AI. AI to a point where then the human beings who have been training them are no longer needed. Yeah, that's a bit like saying, we want you to train this person so that to they take, take over your job. job. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> it's Which so dystopian. Tiring, but yeah. And I understand it because if you want to make money now and it's like gig work essentially you know it's a, it's a money that you can make on the side and that's how they're pitching it and the i'm not gonna lie the rates that they're um giving out there are really great and i from what i've gathered they target people from specific fields so if you have a science background they'll ask you to train it on that aspect oh, okay. if you have a mathematical background it'll you'll be training it on like answering formulas and all that stuff. If they want it trained on grammar, I'm happy to. I'm sure there are like writing and creativity hustle. because remember year like a year ago or so we put in a prompt into ChatGPT asking it to create a screen um screenplay for Oh yeah. <laughs> me and Piers's <laughs> buddy cops. That it was, was hilarious. And it was pretty good, but I'm sure they're still writers out there training ai to be more creative yeah and not just to rip off other people's work yeah but there's going to be a point where it gets so good that maybe you know disney will be like oh we don't need writers anymore which is i can't remember if i mentioned it in our last podcast but um in our company obviously we've been doing some ai experiments with Mm -hmm. gpt 4.0 is it the latest one Mm mm-hmm um, and I tried to get it to write an opinion piece in my voice, mm-hmm. but it got very confused. And so I only put in one sample of my writing yeah. and it was my weekend essay about the end of the world. Yeah. Which, yes, it has a lot of relevance to financial services. So <laughs> I don't want to hear any, anything different. But um, I put that in and I said, can you write me an um, opinion piece about whether Donald Trump is a good leader mm-hmm. in the style of this excerpt above? Yeah. And it just got... So first of all, I put the excerpt in and I didn't give it a prompt and it just started psychoanalyzing me and telling me that I like writing about the end of the world Mm because it gets me away from my own mundane life. Oh, well. I was like, well, thanks. True. Probably true. (laughs) And then I said the Donald Trump question and it just started talking about what kind of leader Donald Trump would be at the end of the world. Mm. So I didn't quite get it. But I do know my sister was telling me there's some journalists who have got their own... They've sort of taken... I can't remember which large language model, but they've taken one and trained it by putting a lot of samples of their own mm-hmm. work in and trained it to write in their voice. Is that good for no. the journalist, though? Well, it's good for them at the moment. It might yeah. be in the future when people realise, oh, we probably don't need the journalist. Like, then. You hardly do any work now. You, <laughs> you just, just put that in, type stuff write in. about this in my voice. <laughs> and they're like, whoa. I, won't tell I mean, you it's efficient. It work smarter, not harder. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
I don't know. I did have another thought about AI, but I can't think of what it is right now. What was it? Oh, I don't know. Um, but I think maybe we should move on to um, our final segment um, because oh, we've no. been here for a little bit. Um, <laughs> oh, no, so this is where we are a little bit silly and goofy. Um, and But I think it's still practical. So I thought we could talk a little bit about our financial mishaps. Um, and the only one that stood out to me was um i was saying this briefly to you before um but during university um i never got like the credit card or anything like that and i never got but i did get the overdraft but i never needed to use it at the time i was quite mm. good but then once i graduated i had a year of unemployment which i will forever hate um what's her name the first lady PM. Margaret Thatcher? No, the first second lady, lady PM. Sorry. I forgot <laughs> about Truss? Margaret. No, the one in oh, the middle. Oh, Theresa May. <laughs> Theresa May. I, forgot about I hate that. Theresa May. Um, well, because I was in the process of getting my British passport, but at the time the Home Office was an absolute wreck. And I remember constantly reading about um, backlogs. Mm. And so I was one. And it, it hurt especially because, like, I remember my parents, my my mum, my dad and my sister all got theirs. Ugh. And it felt like <laughs> I was being actually targeted because I was the only one who wasn't able to work because I graduated mm. in this weird transition phase where I'm like getting my passport. And I, I would go to interviews and be like, I can work, but they'd be like, ah, we don't want to risk it, well, which is way. like fair. But I had a whole year of not working. So... To live and be able to do stuff, I ended up using my my overdraft, which I do regret now. Um, but how else could you have done it? Honestly, I sh probably shouldn't have made as many Sainsbury's trusts. But I was just trying to. <laughs> I was trying to <laughs> have bought food. <laughs> I was I was really into cooking at the time, so I would just like that was my hobby. So I would just go to my local Sainsbury's for ingredients, and that's genuinely where most of my money went that year. Um, and obviously, maybe I should have relied more on my parents, but it's just very hard when you're 21 and you're trying mm. to solidify yourself as an adult. But it wasn't hard for me. I still rely on my parents. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now, now I have no problem being like, dad or mom, um, you know, you brought me into this world against my will. Um, but... You may have already spent half a million pounds on me, but may I have some more? I didn't choose this. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't choose this but yeah that's probably my biggest mishap and I did find myself you know when I was getting into work regretting that because I was like oh now I have to pay off you know debt that I wouldn't have had if I just or if I'd been able to find you know like online work like that AI training thing that I'm talking about that would have been amazing if that mm. was an option for me back then um, but yeah it's something that you live and you learn from and now I really don't like going into too much of my overdraft or using to relying too much on my credit card and I try to be better but obviously things happen um but I think that's yeah one financial misstep that sounds fair yeah and like you learn from your mistakes but I don't <laughs> <laughs> the number of times I've gone into the supermarket for one or two things and come out with a hundred pounds worth of shopping hundred pounds yeah um, but you're vegetarian so now, it's more expensive yeah. vegan now vegan even more expensive because you're buying new and I'm vegetables vegan, so i know. just i like everyone to know that i'm vegan so mm -hmm. i always say i'm vegan i do vegan, vegan i do vegan twice a year and it's the most expensive time for me as well because i'm just constantly getting vegetables because they go off so quickly yeah that's true um i can't think of a standout one i mean as listeners who've read my weekend essays will know i am in quite a lot of debt a lot of people are offering to help you and it is not because yeah but <laughs> i don't know if i want to take that help <laughs> um it's not for one reason and it's not because it's I, just life i it's not because i buy loads of stuff yeah generally yeah i did go through a phase through lockdown of buying loads of stuff that i didn't need mm -hmm. i don't do that anymore 
I don't think I overbuy food. No. Maybe I do. I do go out for dinner a lot. That's probably one. But it's fun. Yeah. I think for me it's it's interesting how d- different people perceive debt. Yeah, I, I don't think, mind it. It's just like I'll just spend the bank's money. I, but I think because of the way I was raised, I have like this f- inherent fear of like having too much debt. Like it's bad. Oh yeah, no. But I at the same time, it's like should have. <laughs> look at your credit score because you're able to balance that debt because they need to see that you're able to do that and pay your. My credit score is really good. Yeah, same. It's like nine nine eight. So and that's because of like managing my debt. And it's just so confusing because at the same time, your parents are like, don't get a credit card, never get into My debt. dad's the king of budgeting. Yeah. He budgets every pound, so I should be like that. But I'm getting better as I get older, but I think, again, it's one of those things where you live and you learn or you get a financial advisor, but I'm not quite there yet. I'll just get into more debt if I get a financial advisor. I mean... I don't know. We my Greg's my Greg's shares are looking pretty good, so maybe I need to be calling a financial advisor soon to be like handle my portfolio <laughs> of this one share I have in Greg's. Um, but I don't know if there's any other um, mishaps that we can talk about. Um, Not a mishap, but I um, I really want to go on a big trip across Korea and Japan, mm-hmm. or some kind of big trip mm-hmm. that's like a month out. Don't mm-hmm. tell. Tom or Piers. Sabbatical. Yeah. You can work. Oh no, it's no, like I don't six want to work. Hours. I just want to take it off. Okay. Um, and instead of doing that, I just keep doing like holidays to hot Europe. places in Europe mm. and spending yeah. my money there, which is really nice. I enjoy it. I've done it every, like last year. I said I'm not going to go abroad this year because I need to save money mm-hmm. so that I can go like but another trip I want to do is Africa specifically Botswana horseback safari Mm -hmm. however I went to Paris Mykonos and Sicily because they're just there and they're They're cheaper they're easy to get to yeah it's not a very long flight yeah they're sunny I think that's the thing is that sometimes you're like oh I really need a break though and Mm -hmm. I think you do like everyone deserves a break and it's really hard it's it's that delayed gratification thing I think that I'm not encompasses that. everything it's really hard to look forward to something that you can't quite imagine um but i'm right now i'm trying to save to go back to zimbabwe around christmas time which will be expensive because that time of year is summer but that's like not too far in the future to be yeah but i've been saving be for this since do. like lockdown stopped oh okay so now my mom's like, no, I'm actually going now. So if you want to come along, which <laughs> she, which is helpful for me, because then I'll have like someone to take me around places to see. Oh right, I think no I accountability to save. No, well, yeah, that too. But also, just it, it just makes traveling easier because I'm not very comfortable speaking in my language, which is terrible. But I only need like Neither a couple mine, of days. So it's fine. English. <laughs> I'm actually really good at English. Yeah, I'm really good at English, but not so good at Shona. But that's just because I'm not speaking it every day. So I think a couple of days there, yeah, I'll be up. fine. Um, but also, just it'll block me from having to see all my relatives because <laughs> I want to actually treat this as a holiday. Uh, but it is hard to save for something like that when you're like, oh, I could just go to Turkey for mm-hmm. half the price, but then end up actually spending just as much as I yeah. would have because i know because i've been like oh i could just go for a week in devon and then i look at the prices of airbnbs there and i'm like oh actually i could go to greece yeah no for like 100 doing a staycation in this country i'm sorry i might as well go abroad because it's just ridiculous um but i think that's everything was there anything else you wanted to cover i don't think so yeah all good well Thank you for joining us in this episode. I had a great time. and So did I. I hope maybe next time we can maybe include one of the other editorial. No, this is, this our, is our thing. exclusive club. Okay. No, of course they can be involved. Maybe we can just one at a time include them. Yeah. Yeah. We can bring them in And then we can grill them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you for joining us and follow us on all social media and follow us on moneymarketing.com as well. 